The story of Chibruki is complex and multi-layered that talks of creation, the law, and human relationships. The Chibruki dreaming is the predominant dreaming of southern Ghana country. It's about the creation of the seven freshwater springs along the coast of the Fluro Peninsula. Chibruki was an ancestral being of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains, whose lands extended from Cape Jarvis in the south to Crystal Brook in the north. Chibruki, much loved nephew, Kalukwi, killed an emu, which was rightfully Chibruki's, but he forgave him for his mistake. However, Kalukwi was killed by his two part brothers, Jawai and Tetjawai, supposedly for breaking the law. Chibruki, being a man of the law, had to decide if Kalakwi had been killed lawfully. He determined Kalakwi had been murdered. Chibruki avenged the crime by spearing and burning the two nephews, killing them. This happened in the vicinity of what is now called Warapalinga. Chibruki then carried Kalakwi's partly smoked, dried body to a freshwater spring at Kingston Park to complete the smoking and then to Rapid Bay for burial. Along his journey, he stopped to rest and overwhelmed by sadness, he wept. He wept and his tears formed the freshwater springs along the coast of Hallett Cove, Port Nulunga, Red Ochre Cove, Port Wollonga, Selix Beach and Wirina Cove. Burned by these events, Chibuki decided he no longer wanted to live as a man. His spirit became a bird, called the Chibuki, which we now know as the Glossy Ibis. And his body became a memorial, made of rock, which can still be seen today at the end of the trail. The Chibuki Trail is a fun and interactive way to involve students in Indigenous culture. The trail is located along Seacliff Beach, just a boomerang's throw away from the Kingston Caravan Park. The Chibuki Trail is roughly two kilometers in length as you travel up, down and around following the story of Chibuki. At each pit stop there are signs that explains a part of the story and uses the surrounding environment to act as a scene to help students picture the events taking part in the story. Between each of these signs there are posts. The posts point out various native flora that surrounds the trail offering Ghana translations. To do this trail, you can either do it by just following the signs provided, or you can actually seek out outside help to guide you through your journey. The caravan park offers you their services in supplying you with a tour guide who will take you along the trail while explaining you the story of Chibuki. In my opinion, contact the Living Ghana Cultural Centre, who will actually send you some volunteers from the Indigenous community to come down and perform the Chibuki story. Through this centre, you can also organise members of the Indigenous community to take groups through Indigenous dances, ceremonies and even perform cooking demonstrations with native foods. The facilities around where the trail is hold eating and cooking facilities, large parkland areas, shelters, seats, 
toilets, and disability access areas if your class has a student that may need wheelchair-friendly facilities. Learning about Indigenous education is so important within schools and it is shown by appearing everywhere, all over the Australian curriculum, throughout all age levels of schooling. Within humanities, this excursion can be easily adapted into history, geography, while also being a great cross-curricular segue into English, physical education, the arts, home economics and many, many more.